What's going on everybody? Chris here, back again, got another video for you. This time, we're taking a look at the Creative Sound Blaster Play 4. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, we're gonna keep this short and simple. This little guy right here, the Sound Blaster Play 4, claims that it'll clean up your audio on your end and allow you to hear people on your end better. Let's go ahead and see if it lives up to its promises. It's not much included in this little tiny packaging. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna get rid of that. Now what's included in the packaging is pretty much just what I'm holding here in my hands. This is the device right here. It comes with a USB-C to USB-A connector, uh, just a little adapter. So if you don't have USB-C, they got you covered. Pretty much a perfect use scenario. You can use it on anything. This device is compatible with Android, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, other mobile devices, PC and Mac. Now there are some caveats with that and I'll get into that in the up close, but this thing is tiny. You can put this in your backpack and your laptop bag, whatever, smaller than a flash drive. Can it live up to the promises? 24 bit audio, 192 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sample rate, the bit depth, all that jazz. And I'll tell you guys what I think. All right, so we're gonna go from the up top camera, we're gonna go down to the laptop, and I'm gonna show you exactly what this device will do. I'm gonna give you guys some real world use case scenarios to kind of see, does it clean up your sound and does it actually improve the audio over what's included in your laptop? Now, the laptop I'm gonna be using for this review is this Razer Blade right here from 2019, I believe. This is a fine laptop, fairly modern, good to go. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, this device has two different modes. It has a kind of universal support mode, which is blue blinking lights when you plug it in and white blinking lights when you plug it in. All that means is that when it's in blue mode, which is you know universal support, you're gonna have more compatibility with more devices. So Switch will detect it, PlayStation will detect it, mobile devices will detect it, things like that. PC and Mac will also detect it, but if you wanna get the most sound quality out of it on a PC, you want it in white mode. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And it lets you know that it's in that mode by flashing when you plug it in. So you'll notice here, boom, it starts to flash to indicate that we are in white mode. Now, if it was in blue mode, it would indicate that by being blue. Now to change that, you simply hold down this multifunction button for about three seconds and it'll blink and change over. Okay, so now that we're at the desktop, I'm still running the lavalier mic that you heard in the intro, which is a purple panda mic, not a big expensive mic, into a Tascam DR40. That's doing the standard voice mic like I always would do. Now I will A and B in between the audio from OBS, which is capturing the audio as you would hear using the software, using the noise clean features. And I'm gonna give it some real world tests. I'm going to have some noise made in the background if your dog's playing with a toy while you're in a meeting, if somebody was vacuuming or if you hear running water in dishes like those are common things that people will you'll hear in the background if you know you, you have other people you live with so let's go ahead and dive into this the headphone we're using as I said is just it's a Bowers and Wilkins inline mic nothing crazy the great headphones but the mic on these has always been kind of subpar we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the software though so let's dive into this so this is what you're greeted with once you've got it all installed you have your sound mode which you can change all of these different options. Now, all these do is they change varying levels of the mixer, the acoustic engine, uh, things like that. So if you're not familiar with Sound Blaster or Creative's acoustic engine, they have a bunch of different things like Smart Volume, which is essentially a compressor, uh, bass, which increases the low frequency, basically just gives it a lower shelf. Crystallizer, again, does some EQing, brings out the, the high fidelity, the high frequency, as it were, of any mix, so you get a lot more open sound. That's why they call it crystallizer. It's very, very crystalline and very crisp when you turn that on. Uh, Dialogue Plus just tries to enhance audio for dialogue. Um, so if you're listening to like a movie or you have a song or a band you're listening to and the audio is kind of buried in the background for the vocal track, you can flip that on, you can hear it a little bit better. Surround sound is just, you know, an immersive virtual surround sound, that's all it is. And I don't really run any of these on, uh, I just prefer my headphones to be represented for what I bought my headphones for. Now, the one thing in here that I'm sure everyone's curious about is the smart comms kit. So what you're hearing now is the headphone microphone, not the lavalier. And I'll be quiet, and I have a fan on in the background, it's nothing crazy, but this is kind of what the ambient noise you would hear. It's pretty quiet, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so now let me go ahead and turn the smart comms kit on. Now I'm not doing anything differently. You can't hear my breathing, which is great because I know breathing is a common thing. People are like, dude, who is breathing and the mic's so loud? It's a common thing. This is actually doing a fantastic job at adjusting with it and canceling that noise out. Now, here's something else to keep in mind. You can change all of these settings. You go through here and you can actually change it from auto 
uh, turn it off and you can change the way you want everything to work. You can change your mic style from a headset or to a boom, you just select other. Uh, noise clean out. This is basically to reduce your background noise um, You know, when you're giving a presentation. When you turn noise clean in, what this does is it cleans up other people's audio. So if you have somebody really, really, really just a bunch of background noise in their video, this actually helps clean this up when you're in online calls such as Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Teams, things like that. A really useful tool. Um, it definitely does work. Uh, I was playing with it a little bit earlier doing some demos and it did. it's noticeable. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to record a bunch of people because the state I live in, it's a two-party consent state and I am not getting into that whole legal mess of trying to record somebody for the sake of this review. Take my word on it, it works just as well as the noise clean out, which we're going to go ahead and show you right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start this demo off with uh, vacuuming. If you've got a rude roommate or someone you live with, you're going to hear that in the background. Now, smart comms is off. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and check this out. This is no audio tomfoolery. This is all it is. Now, they're still vacuuming. And I know you can hear it in the transients when I stop talking before the gate comes in. But this is genuine witchcraft. Still vacuuming. Dead silence on the view meter. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so you can hear that the vacuum's still running in real time. Yeah, so that works well for constant droning noises. All right, so we're going to do another one here. Let's say your dog, while you're in a meeting with your boss, and it's super important, they want to go ahead and find their favorite toy and just go bananas and start squeaking the daylights out of it. Smart comms is off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now, it's not a perfect system for in and out noises. So as you can tell, it's not an entirely perfect system. Okie dokie, now this last demo we're gonna do, this one is somebody decided it's the perfect time to do dishes while somebody's in a meeting. And yes, I have been guilty of this one. As you can hear, there's banging in the background, all sorts of stuff like that. I'll go ahead and be quiet so you can hear the background noise. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and turn the smart comms kit on. Okay, the smart comms kit is on now. It is phenomenal at reducing how obnoxious the background noise is. And it does this both ways with clean in and clean out. All right, and just for reference, we're going to go ahead and turn the smart comms kit off. Smart comms kit on. Smart comms kit off. All right, and while we're looking here in the software, something else to keep in mind, you can change the audio quality, boom. Uh, you can actually choose your headphones. Now these obviously aren't going to be in here because they are much older, but uh, you can select something close to what your headphones sound like. They have the common ones, like the Samsung Galaxy headphone, Apple EarPods, things like that. So you have some options there to kind of tweak that. And all that's gonna do is kind of switch the bass and acoustic engine for those headphones to know where the crossover frequency is, where there's kind of some dead zones. Uh, microphone quality, the whole review you've heard has been in 24-bit on here, on the device down here. Uh, we're in 16-bit wave through the uh, lavalier. You can also reset the device down here, tell it to auto download drivers and check for driver updates. And as you can see here, this, this update was checked today while I was doing this review. This is the current version. Now, as I said earlier, I did have to download multiple updates to get everything perfect. It wanted to ask for one update, then another, and then another one after that. Not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind. Now, there is somewhat of a big caveat with this. And it's something I noticed in my testing. I'm gonna go ahead and put on some music. This is some music that's copyright free. It's on my other YouTube channel, Homebrew Beats. If you're not familiar, go ahead and subscribe. All right, now as you can hear right now, you can hear my desktop audio through this headphone. It's really weird, I don't know why the device does this. Uh, it is noticeable if you have smart comms kit turned off. If you turn it on, it helps kind of minimize this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the music off right now. But that is something to keep in mind with this device. And I'm not sure if it's the headphones, I've tried multiple headphones and it does it with every set I've got. It could be something with the wiring, with it being TRRS. You might be like, oh, that's a deal breaker. 
if you're paying attention to the people that you're talking to in your meetings or in your video calls, it's not that big of a deal. Just make sure you're not playing any music or watching any videos or something like that because people will be able to hear you. Uh, even with the smart comps kit turned on, people will be like, wow, who's bumping some music? It's a small thing. I don't think it's the device, although it may be. I've tried multiple headphones. I, I'm not sure. It's, it could be a limitation of TRRS. Could be dirty plug. You know, you never know. There could be some crosstalk between the channels because the way the pinout is on the connector. Not 100% sure. Smart comms kit seems to help, but it's not a surefire fix. And yeah, other than that, I mean, this is a great little device. The sound quality is phenomenal. I have nothing to knock about it. It's as clear, if not more clear on certain things with in-ears than my Steinberg UR242 interface. So yeah, let's go ahead and go up to the top and we're gonna wrap this video up. So what do I think about this device? I think for $29.99, you get more than what you pay for. It cleans up the audio really well when you turn the features on in the creative software. If you have them off, I've noticed some caveats with it that you need to be aware of. If you're listening to music while you're working, which I know a lot of us are, the microphone, at least on this model, with my headphones, and I tried two different sets of headsets, you can hear what's coming through in my ears through the mic device. Uh, it's su it's subtle, but it is there. When you turn the, the clean noise in and clean noise out, as Creative calls it, when you turn those on and off, it helps eliminate it, but it is still present when you speak. People can hear it. So ideally when you're working, obviously, or you're using this device, you would wanna give the person you're talking to your undivided attention. But it is something to keep in mind because if you like to listen to music while you work, someone will definitely know you're listening to music and they'll probably hear your music pretty clearly. Other than that, I think the technology in the device is great. I think the noise canceling ticks all the boxes. It works as advertised. It's really unfortunate that you have to use the software on it and I understand why. I wish that it was programmed into the device as just a self-contained unit, but obviously that would bring the cost up way more than what you're paying for. So again, you want a device that cleans up your audio or you have a broken headphone jack on your laptop or something like that and you, you need something that'll get you through that's really high fidelity quality that works, that you know sounds fantastic, for 30 bucks, you can't beat this device. Genuinely, you can't beat it. One more caveat with this little guy and then we're gonna wrap this up. I downloaded the drivers, installed the application real quick, all one, one EXE, drivers and application, installed it. As soon as it opened up, it went to creative and pulled another update. And I said, okay, fair enough. Once that update was completed, then it wanted to do another update for the device. So you're sitting there with multiple updates. Now, it might not sound like a big deal, but if you plan on using this on a work machine to try to clean up your audio, like an enterprise machine where you don't have admin rights and you can't install software, that could be a problem. Um, for me, not that big of a deal, but just something to keep in mind when you're doing the install. Having multiple windows pop up after the install for updates and things like that is fairly common, but it is just something to keep in mind. If you pull the latest version from the website and install it, in my opinion, that should be it. You shouldn't need to go check in with them to get another version of the application. It's just an update thing on the site. Not a big deal, but at the time of the video, that's something I came across. Some of the things I do really dig about the device, it's cheap, the audio quality is fantastic, it works on my Switch, which I dig, it'll work on your PlayStation, it has cross-platform support, for Mac, PC, PlayStation, Switch, mobile devices, the whole lot. I like that Creative included a USB A to C adapter. That's sweet. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Big props to you guys for that one. All right, that's gonna do it. If you guys found this video useful or resourceful or helpful in any kind of way, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down, leave a comment and tell me why you didn't like it. I'm always trying to provide better content. As always, this is Chris and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.